Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel, you Hebrews of lights, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Gotta give all praises on and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. The most high the heavenly father, his Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahai, not Allah, it's Yahweh. And his only begotten son name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Not Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapis Christos, not Yeshua, not Yehoshua. It's Yahweh Shah. So we gotta give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rekah Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and that of Bishop and that is a great millstone, who well, who teach well. Who are the apostles and elders of all Israel, rather than accepted or not. In the sense of salutation to all the offering, pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four ends of the earth, the entire world waking up the whole for the elect. And shalom to the Akwath who are listening and learning, and you few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm Isaiah from Jim Messalano Camp coming at you with another lesson in truth, faith, faith, and education. Another daily education, Lord Willis, we had to find. And this is the lamb back off the lesson I just did. The world's monetary problem is Babylon the Great. The reason everybody is in debt because of Babylon is great petrodollar. So Lord was it better find. The reign of the petrodollar finally come to an end. This will be at the forefront of today's video. High energy prices caused by Russia's Ukraine invasion mean the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, OPEC, will earn $907 billion from oil exports this year, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, EIA, compared with $577 billion on average since 2000, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Kuwait will collectively have a $409 billion current account surplus, reckons capital economics, or almost three times last year's total. Russia's current account. Surplus so far in 2022 has also tripled year on year. In previous petrodollar booms, energy producers have recycled their windfalls into the Western financial system. Saudi, for example, racked up a cumulative $160 billion current account surplus between 1974 and 1982, according to economist David Lubin's book, Dance of the Trillions, almost all of which went into the eurodollar market a term for dollar-denominated deposits held outside of America. For example, in European banks or the European branches of U.S. lenders, the banks, in turn, lent those deposits to Argentina, Chile, and others in an emerging market debt boom. When energy prices spiked again in the early 21st century, fossil fuel producers funneled proceeds into Western financial assets through central bank reserves and sovereign wealth funds. Middle Eastern oil exporters and Russia together increased their holdings of U.S. debt and equity securities by almost $500 billion between 2003 and 2008, a five-fold increase that was only beaten in absolute terms by China and the Cayman Islands. That buttressed demand for U.S. stocks and bonds, while oil exporters and tycoons also splurged on European soccer clubs and department stores. These financial flows, known as petrodollar recycling, meaning that the money Westerners spend on fuel eventually makes its way back into their economies through energy producers' financial investments. It's happening again. Saudi's Public Investment Fund, PIF, has opened new offices in London and New York, and this summer went on a U.S. equity market shopping spree, scooping up shares in Alphabet and Microsoft. The Abu Dhabi Investment Authority recently poached New York-based Deutsche Bank. Rainmaker drew Goldman to run real estate investing, but the spoils may disappoint Western financiers with long memories. First, they're smaller in relative terms. Adjusted for inflation, OPEC's revenue was higher between 2010 and 2014 than it will be this year. EIA data shows Saudi, the UAE, Kuwait, and Qatar's forecast 2022 current account surplus will be worth 1.6% of U.S. GDP, compared with 2.5% in 1974. According to breaking these calculations based on capital economics. Everything about energy is changing. New discoveries, new technology. Economics, Federal Reserve, and Bank of England data. Second, the energy producers may choose to squirrel away some of their proceeds elsewhere. Sanctions prevent Russia, for example, from investing in U.S. and European financial assets even if it wanted to and the West's decision to freeze Moscow's foreign exchange reserves may encourage Gulf states to spread their bets, 
lest they one day find themselves in Russia's shoes. Global dollar and euro-denominated central bank currency reserves had already dipped to 79% of the total in March 2022 compared with 85% six years earlier, according to International Monetary Fund data. Finally, OPEC countries face huge domestic investment requirements to reduce their reliance on selling fossil fuels as the world moves towards renewable energy. For Saudi, that could mean spending more on education to boost its services sector, or building up the NAMO portion of its manufacturing industry, like solar power. The kingdom's human rights record has undermined its hope for foreign direct investment boom, but the energy windfall could serve as a substitute. For the second year in a row, the IMF expects the PIF to undertake more local investment this year than the Saudi central government. Finance Minister Mohammed al Jadan said in May that the country would spend its 2022 surplus wherever it would have, designed to help spur private sector investment. Saudi may of course fail to invest its windfall wisely. Either way, it would mean that Westerners miss out on some of the spoils of the new petrodollar boom. Banks, buyout barons, and high-end real estate agents may bemoan that. But not everyone should. Previous episodes of petrodollar recycling coincided with harmful asset bubbles. The 1970s Latin American lending boom quickly became the 1980s Latin American debt crisis, with many countries unable to service their foreign borrowings. Petrodollar demand helped keep U.S. borrowing costs low in the run-up to 2008 even as the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates, arguably contributing to the pre-crisis excess. The lesson is that huge financial flows, while enriching middlemen on Wall Street and in the City of London, often also destabilize the economy. A more muted petrodollar boom might not be such a bad thing after all, disrupting the dollar's dominance in global equity markets. The BRICS Stock Exchanges Alliance is an interesting case of a BRICS coalition initiated by the market and mobilized through the market within the existing global financial system. This alliance idea was first suggested by the Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing Limited HKX, in June 2010, shortly after South Africa joined the BRIC Group in October 2011. Stock exchanges in BRICS countries announced an initiative to cross-list benchmark equity index derivatives. This initiative brought together Brazil's BMNF Bovespa, Russia's Moscow Interbank Currency Exchange from Russia, HKX as the initial China representative and South Africa's Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the National Stock Exchange of India, NSE, and the BSE Limited, formerly known as the Bombay Stock Exchange, have signed letters of support and will join the alliance after finalizing outstanding requirements. The BRICS leaders endorsed the formation of this equity market alliance at the 2012 BRICS Summit, and the BRICS Stock Exchanges Alliance also started cross-listing equity benchmark index derivatives that could be bought in local currencies during this summit. Members of the BRICS Stock Exchanges Alliance have planned three stages of implementation for the initiative. The first stage is the cross-listing of benchmark equity index derivatives, which is meant to facilitate liquidity growth in the BRICS markets and strengthen the international position of the BRICS Alliance in the global economy. Participating exchanges offer local currency-denominated benchmark equity index derivatives. In the second stage, members of the alliance plan to jointly develop new products for cross-listing on their exchanges. The third stage will include further cooperation in developing joint products and new services. Although the BRICS Stock Exchanges Alliance was not initiated with the goal of de-dollarization, the outcome is a step toward reducing the US dollar's dominance in the global equities market. At the time of its announcement, the seven participating exchanges represented a combined listed market capitalization of $9.02 trillion and an equity market trading value per month of $422 billion and 9,481 listed companies. They also accounted for over 18% of all exchange-listed derivative contracts traded by volume worldwide at that time. These exchanges collectively represent sizable and fast-growing equity markets that are not traded using the US dollar. Deeper cooperation through cross-listing and joint product development would facilitate the broader use of BRICS local currencies in these equity markets. A BRICS Exchanges Alliance is appealing to investors in BRICS countries as well as those overseas. The alliance allows domestic investors within BRICS who want to go offshore to trade index futures and options for each exchange on their domestic market to use their own currency, which is free of capital controls or currency risk, for investors outside of the BRICS countries. The alliance offers easy access to major equity index derivatives of the BRICS markets, 
which gives them an opportunity for portfolio diversification and for gaining exposure to BRICS equity markets. Broader domestic and international participation in the cross-listed financial products will not only raise the profile of the exchanges but also increase the use of BRICS currencies in global equity markets and divert capital traffic away from the dollar-denominated financial assets. Moreover, for investors who already have exposure to BRICS economies, futures are essential for hedging and risk management, which is a necessity for developing a robust financial ecosystem in BRICS countries. What are your thoughts on the petrodollar? Let me know down below. That's it for today's video. If you want to continue to learn about business. You see? It's going down, man. Now check this out. Because this one here is heavy. It's only 3 minutes and 51 seconds. I'm going to get a couple precepts. Let's see. As the scriptures say, this uh seven-head beast, this seven-head ten-horn beast system, it's breaking up, man. As the scriptures already said in Daniel 2. They shall mingle themselves with the seeds of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. Now check this out, because this is really heavy. And the apostles been saying this for years, man. War in Ukraine has brought the United States of America and Europe closer than they've ever been before. USA is now Europe's largest supplier of liquefied natural gas. However, their relationship isn't free of complications. In fact, the EU-US relationship is fast headed towards an all-out trade war. At the heart of this upcoming trade war is Joe Biden's Inflation Reduction Act, which Europe has now declared to be discriminatory. The US must be scared because Europe is now threatening Washington with retaliation. Hello and welcome. This is Sambir Singh Ranhotra and you're watching First Post. You see that? EU stern warning to USA. You see that? EU's stern warning <laughs> to USA. Now, real quick, quick precept. EU stern warning to USA. Now, why would this be so if they all on the same page, if they all together? Well, they are not. Revelation 17 and 16 reads. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. The ten horns is the EU nations. EU's stern warning to USA. Prophecy is being fulfilled. It's playing out every day, man. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore. EU's stern warning to USA. Revelation 17 and 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is Jeremiah 50. In verse 12 it reads, Your mother shall be so confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, all the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. So if the scriptures say, the mother that bowed Babylon the great shall be so confounded against her, how much more everybody else, man? Which is Great Britain, okay? America was funded through Great Britain, man. So now here's the ten, here's the ten horns showing themselves to hate the whore, man. When the Inflation Reduction Act was signed by Joe Biden, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen took to Twitter to celebrate. She said, and I quote, I welcome the signature of the Inflation Reduction Act by Joe Biden. With it, our American partners are laying the ground for a clean energy economy in the US. Europe and USA will keep investing in climate action. Now, the European Union is calling the same Inflation Reduction Act discriminatory. The European Union has called on the U.S. to amend certain tax benefits in the Act or risk European retaliation. It also called for more transparency in tax credits granted by the law and to ensure that the subsidies don't create adverse effects. The European Union went on to claim that the $369 billion package of subsidies and tax credits for American producers and consumers contravenes World Trade Organization treaties. 
According to the European Commission's letter to the United States, if implemented in its current form, the act risks causing not only economic damage to both the US and its closest trading partners, resulting in inefficiencies and market distortions, but could also trigger a harmful global subsidy race to the bottom on key technologies and inputs for the green transition. It added, moreover, it risks creating tensions that could lead to reciprocal or retaliatory measures. Here's where the European Union is talking of a trade war against the United States. The EU wants changes to nine of the provisions in the legislation which restrict subsidies and tax credits to products made in the US or companies operating there. For Joe Biden, the Inflation Reduction Act is a prestige legislation and it has already been signed. Tinkering with it now will cast Biden in a bad light. Given how the American president's approval ratings are struggling, he would not want to be seen as succumbing to European pressure. But the European Union is quite serious about getting Washington to walk back on several provisions of the act. If Biden refuses to play ball, Europe is threatening to bring a case against the United States in front of the World Trade Organization. That's practically the US getting sued by Europe at a time when the world believes relations between the two sides are at their strongest in decades. Once Europe does retaliate, the USA won't just be a mute spectator. It will hit back with a series of trade tariffs and restrictions of its own. That will heighten tensions between both the sides. What bearing will a trade war between the US and the EU have on Ukraine? You see? Let us know in the comments. You see? Prophecy, man. Prophecy, man. And the apostles have been saying this for years, man. Okay. <laughs> The apostle's been saying this for years, man. Hold on. I got to get this still. Where is it? The apostle's been saying this, man. I'm going to read it again. The ten horns upon the beast. These shall hate the whore, man. Again. <laughs> they ain't on the same page, man. The Edomites have been fighting amongst themselves since the beginning of their rulership, man. Starting with Alexander the Crete, man. Okay, his four generals, man. They've been fighting amongst themselves, man. They have always been doing this. So, dealing with, when they're reading, reading Daniel 7, when they tell you about uh, one little horn came up and plucked up the three little horns, the three other horns were plucked up by the one little horn, Right, that was the three little the three horns that was plucked up by the other horn was the Spanish, French, and the British, man. Right? Colonizing America, man. And America America was funded by Great Britain. So now you got EU stern warning to the USA, man. This is war, man. So in Revelation again. Revelation 17 and 16. And the ten horns which thou saw us upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn it with fire. So now you got to ask yourself, how is the ten horns that's on the beast going to hate the whore, man? Let's read this in Revelation 13 and 1. Revelation 13 and 1 it reads, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. So, if the ten horns is on the heads of the beast, what's going on? What well, is the Lord showing you? This is the ten horns of the EU nations, which now is like, um, it's over like, a. Uh, 29 of them. Then you got the NATO nations, which is over 30 of them. I think it's like 30 something of the uh, NATO, which is NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And EU is the European Union nations. Or it should be called ECC, the uh, uh, European, the EEC, European Economic Community, which now is EU. So, 
This is the separation, man. And the Lord said it was going to be like this in Daniel's the second chapter. So, the ten horns that's on the beast, the ten horns on the head, shall hate the whore, man. The whore is North America, Babylon the Great. So now you're going to have NATO and EU hating the beast, man. I mean, hating the whore, so like you. So now EU and NATO is going to hate the whore, and they all, they all is of the beast system, man. So what's really going on? Prophecy is playing out, man. This is prophecy, man. And the Lord say, <clears throat> in um, Amos, I'm going to read this in Amos. Amos 9 to 1, it reads, I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. Cut who in the head? The beast, man. The beast system. EU, NATO, and North America. And these nations, when you read in Daniel 7, these nations, oh, let me get this. These nations are going to be able to go back into their countries, man. When Israel get back in rulership, when Yahweh re returns to conquer all these nations, these heathen nations are going to be able to go back into their lands and live in peace with real food, real water, clean air. In the so-called white man, ain't going to be nowhere to be found, man. And this is what the other nations say. This is Isaiah 14. Let's read verse 4. Thou shalt take up this parable against the king of Babylon, the so-called white man, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city cease? The Lord hath broken his staff for the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continuous stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindered. Okay? The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. And that's what the Lord say. He is against Gog and Magog too, man. Okay? He's against them too, but they're going to use, he's going to use Gog and Magog to destroy Babylon the Great, man. All these Edomites have to be removed out the earth because they are the cancer of the earth, man. It ain't just the Babylonians, Edomites. It's all the, it's all the Edomites, man, just joined to this beast system, the seven heads and ten horns, man. Okay, which mainly are Edomites. This is an Edomite, this is an Edomite rulership, man. Isaiah 14 and 7, the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Here's the trees going to rejoice when there is nobody to cut them down in wickedness, man. Because there's certain trees that should not be cut down. The Lord, It's a law on that, man. Well, these devils cut down all the trees. They don't care. Verse 9, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. What hell mean? Hell is a condition, it's the judgment, or it's a grave, it's an affliction. So now, these devils' judgment is approaching, which is slavery. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. The dead is the heathen nations. I tell you right here, even all the chief ones of the earth, it have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. That's why. Everybody's going to hate the whore. North America, Babylon the Great, man. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Are thou become weak as we? Are thou become like unto us? Thy pump is brought down to the grave. The noise of thy vows, the worms is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Worms spread it under you and cover you. That's total corrosion, man. Corruption. Okay, the infrastructure, the economy, the monetary system is all being deteriorated, man. When you jump down, verse four, Isaiah 14, this is verse 18, it reads, All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. Why? Because in Jeremiah, Babylon the Great made all these nations drink of their philosophies. 
This is Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. All these nations are pissed off, man. Because these devils, when you read verse 25, it reads, Jeremiah 51 and 25. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith Yahweh, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. And will make thee a burnt mountain. So North America, Babylon the Great, has destroyed all the other nations. Through what? Through the petrodollar. Through his policies. Through his legislations. Through his democracy. Through his philosophy. Through his draconian measures, man. Okay? His constitutions. His policies, man. Their legislations, man. Their draconian measures. Revelation 11, 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servant the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, which are all Israelites, small and great, and shouldest destroy them, which destroy the earth, man. The so-called white man is destroying the earth through the petrodollar, and its draconian measures, its legislations, man. It's philosophies, it's policies, it's democracy, man. Okay? And on top of that, it's religion, man. Okay? Uh, the rudiments of the world, man. This devil destroying the earth through the rudiments. Esau, Edom's rudiments because the earth was given to the hand of the wicked, man. So now here is their own people. The ten horns that's on their seven heads is coming against them, man. This is Isaiah 19 and 2. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. They shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. Okay. Let's get this in, in Luke. Again, 11 and 17. But he knowing their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. So we watching, we watching the beast system crumble, man. We watching EU, NATO, and Babylon the Great crumble together, man. Why? Because they all put their hands on the apple of the Lord's eye, which is our so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Okay? All these nations had a hand on us, man. And they all paying for it. So, Lord willingness is edifying. Lord willingness will edifying. Got to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rekah Quraysh. Double honors to the apostles and elders, bishops and elders of great millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all Israel, ready to concept it or not. In a sincere salutation to all the are pushing this truth and believing this truth, who are the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hope for the elect, and shalom on to the Agwa who are listening and learning. If your sisters were listening on the Lord was edifying tonight, tell them I say shalom. Wah, ba, ba, ba. Wah for tuning in. May you have your mouth shall continue blessing your houses. Stay prayed up. Now I also want to read this. This is Daniel chapter 2. This is dealing with uh, North America, Babylon the Great. This is Daniel 2 and 40 reads, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdue all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall they break in pieces and bruise. So this is dealing with the Roman Empire. And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of part is clay and part of iron, and this feet and toes is North America, Babylon the Great, and EU and NATO, okay, the beast system. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of part is clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Okay, that's why it's EU, NATO, and North America, Babylon the Great. But there shall be in it of the strength of iron, far as much as iron, far as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Right? And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seeds of men, which are the heathen nations, the other 16 heathen nations, 
but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with miry clay. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. So, what we're seeing is, there's a division, man, in the EU, NATO, and North America, Babylon the Great, man. Okay? The ten horns upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Okay? <laughs> And make her desolate. That's what's coming soon, man. Missiles will be shot over here to North America, Babylon the Great, man. Okay? All behind the petrol dollar, man. All behind the wickedness of this place. Hey, so, a while for tuning in. Until next time, I say shalom. Wah, ba, ba, ba.